नमस्कार वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून यू आर वाचिंग पीएम ई विद्या चैनल एंड एनसीआर आर टी ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम रेणु भट योर होस्ट ऑफ दिस सेशन एंड लेट मी टेल यू द टॉपिक दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टुडे इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन दैट इज डाइवर्सिटी इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर वेरी मच इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड दिस इज फॉर नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड साइंस स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी हैव आर एक्सपर्ट विद अस यू आर डॉक्टर प्रियंका वार्षण असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर लेडी एरविन कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली वेरी वॉम वेलकम मैम I'm good. I hope you are doing also good. Yes. And I hope our learners, our audience, and teachers, educators, all viewers are do doing so good and great these days. Uh, let me tell you the ways through which you can ask your queries and doubts with us, and you can drop your queries and comments at our email address that is dth dot class nine at the red cit dot nic dot i n. You can call us on our telephone number that is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. And if you are joined us through live streaming of NCERT official YouTube channel, you can go to live chat section and you can drop your comments out there. Our expert will be happy to answer all your queries and doubts. So, ma'am, let's uh, proceed to understand this very important and significant topic that is diversity in living organism. We'll start with the question that what is biodiversity and why it is so important to study that? Ma'am, ma yeah. Thank you for asking this question. Uh, hmm. Because I think this is very, very important to know uh, why we are living in the world. Exactly. So, wish my students uh, a very good afternoon students and i'm sure you are doing good so as ma'am has raised a very pertinent question as and all of you can see uh, the topic of my talk today this is diversity in living organism uh, formally if we talk students uh, this is uh, the chapter number 7 of your 9th class ncert book and this theme is very very important and pertinent for you to understand and i would say uh, this theme is very important because uh, we are living in a society which is very diverse number one and we are not only diverse in terms of uh, human beings being different uh, in this living world we see so many organisms mm -hmm. which are alive which are doing their life but they are very different they are very diverse So, uh, i would say ma'am that human beings have always been very very curious about the surroundings uh, they have been very very observant they have been hmm. very very curious and they have always tried to find out hmm. the reasons behind if something is present so exactly. this is number 1 this is very important uh, for us to know what is there in our surrounding and number 2 ma'am uh, in terms of science and various needs and requirements in context of contemporary time it's very very important that we know about uh, the biodiversity and the living beings which exist around us and how we help each other i will not say that they are useful for us because uh, when we talk about the concept of ecosystem hmm. so many organisms are there and human beings are also one of them so how do we uh, exist together and how we are helping each other in our survival and existence on this earth so mm. that's why i think this topic is going to help us in understanding our own existence mm. and also vis a vis existence and variety which exist among all the living organisms so that's why i think ma'am this is very important for students yeah rightly said ma'am is there any contemporary daily life application of this topic to study yes ma'am yes ma'am there are there are many i mean i will not go into detail because as mm. i will be proceeding in my chapter uh students will come to know about it but uh, to just highlight a very very important aspect uh for last one and a half years all of us have been struggling with this pandemic uh called covid-19 pandemic hmm. and i think this was the knowledge of diversity of living beings only which was there with us our scientists our all the i would say medical field workers and everybody who was involved front line workers who were involved in you know medical sciences they had this knowledge of how living organisms are diverse number 1 and what is the causative agent of this pandemic which is virus so had we been not knowing the uh, the features and the characteristics of the virus and how the virus is working i think we would not have been uh, able to successful to uh, come out with vaccine so soon and it would have taken a toll on uh, the lives of human beings so i think uh, more than ever before we are seeing the application of knowing this topic uh, in uh, today's context Yes, ma'am. And right now, I would request you to start your uh, discussion with your PPT, ma'am. 
yes ma'am thank you yes. so uh, students uh, let's start uh, the discussion of today that is topic is diversity in living organisms uh, first of all i would like you to know what all we are going to do in this discussion today so the key points of discussion are broad concept of diversity very briefly i'll talk about what do we mean by diversity and biological diversity among living organisms it's not coming from general diversity to biological diversity we'll talk about need importance and significance of understanding the biological diversity why do we need to understand biological diversity we will be knowing this basis of classification when we talk about classifying different living organisms why are we classifying number one and what is the basis criteria of classification we'll come to know and if there is some relationship between the classification and evolution so we'll try to know this relationship as well the hierarchy of classification among various groups like you know what is the hierarchy what is the basic foundation of classification then we come over there then what is the criteria then what is the criteria so we'll come to know about the hierarchy of classification also and yes uh, very briefly i'll be talking about the important characteristics of uh, all the five pillars which were given by r s whitaker in 1969 so this is going to be the uh, key pointers now uh, students uh, i have taken this visual uh, for you as you see in this visual so many people are there hmm. all of us are homo sapiens hmm. but we look so different if we go into northern pole southern pole we go into different countries continents be it us uk asia and be it africa so if we go to different parts of this earth we realize all of us are human beings all of us are homo sapiens but we look so different number 1 this is about the racial diversity in indian context if we say we are so diverse be it, you know the diversity of religion caste class gender region so many diversity is there so that is the very essence of us it is there be it cultural diversity or be it biological diversity we are culturally very diverse and we are biologically very diverse now when i say biologically diverse in homo sapiens we have different genes that's why we look uh, different because uh, people belonging to one race may have you know predominance of one type of genes and then people belonging to other uh, races they might have some diversity of genes but this diversity does not stop only at the level of existence of diversity among human beings if we look in our surrounding right from starting the moment we are born we've been very very observant and we've been observing our uh, natural surroundings and we see apart from us we are not the only ones who are existing on this earth so many living beings are there be it, you know plants be it animals be it microorganisms be yeah. it uh, fungi be it amoeba be mm -hmm. it, uh, mosquito so many diversity is there and, and they are living beings i am not uh, here talking about non living beings they are all living beings their lives but they are so different they are so so different so this is one thing that we need to know and apart from that how they are useful for us so let's move towards the biological diversity now students when we uh, think about biological diversity as i just mentioned you just look around go anywhere you will see a lot of biological diversity is there and what do we mean by biological diversity that is there are different forms in which life occurs on earth so different organisms are there and they are looking so different and they are having different features and characteristics and the range is also very wide students you would see when we talk about bacteria very small i mean you cannot see the bacteria with naked eyes that's so small but if you talk about uh, elephant that's so big and both the organisms are living beings so you know this is so amazing that one side life is showing us bacteria on another side we have elephant ostrich human beings whales such such a huge diversity so these are different forms and that is what is known as biological diversity so this diversity is not only in terms of appearance this is about you know uh, uh life span also like many uh, organisms have a life span of very few days but many uh, i would say uh, trees and all they live for thousand of years so there there is a huge variety in terms of appearance there is a huge variety in terms of our functions characteristics and there is a huge variety in terms of our life span and so many things hmm. so if we start on a journey where we are uh, observing different organisms we will see number one they are very diverse but number two they are diverse on multiple aspects so ma'am i would say that 
if there has not been any system of organization hmm. classification and arranging them into categories and groups i think uh, all the advance, advances into medical sciences would have been very very difficult because this is such a huge diversity we don't know where to go right how to evolve the antibiotic how to uh, uh, produce vaccinations so many things are there so this has been very very important for us hmm. now as i have just said there are so many diversity which is there be it ecosystem diversity be it species diversity be it organism diversity so many diversity uh, types of diversity is there and this is very important to understand our students as you can see i have noted down three important diversities species diversity is there so like homo sapiens human beings are one species and we see mosquitoes we see worms we see uh, amoeba we see uh, so many species dogs are around us cow you know uh, yeah. wild animals plants so they are different species and what is the uh, criteria that we belong to one species the criteria is that members of one species they are able to breed together and they are able to perpetuate their uh, race hmm. so they are known as species so for example if reproduction has to happen and uh, new progeny has to come so this is not possible inter species this has to be within species so human beings can reproduce uh, in the homo sapiens mosquitoes can reproduce in mosquitoes so this is like that so one diversity is there that so many species are there there i think the calculation is approximately uh, 10 million uh, species are there on earth and out of that we just know 10 uh, 1 to 2 million uh, species so so many species are already there which we don't know so hmm. so much diversity is there in terms of species and apart from that uh, as i just mentioned there is a genetic diversity also like within one species all the individuals are not same and for that matter i would say no two siblings are same i mean we may be the children of same parents but we are not same because genetic diversity is there and this diversity is not only in their animals it is there in plants it's there in fungus it's there in bacteria everywhere in virus also these days we are saying third and fourth variant of coronavirus is coming why because there is a genetic uh, diversity in virus so exactly. this diversity is there yes ma'am so, so this diversity is there within even within one species one organism we are saying that uh, organism belonging to one species are having this diversity and then there are this ecosystem diversity different habitats are there on earth we have different regions like you know tropical regions we have subtropical regions we have uh, so many diversity in terms of temperature uh, i would say humidity mm -hmm. and day and night schedule so many things so so this diversity is also and species are uh, i would say uh, evolved in a particular uh, geographical region as per the temperature and the other uh, requirements also so so much diversity is there and this is what is very uh, important for us to know understand that these things are needed to be understand in an organized manner and you just can't go without understanding these things so this is i think i will not elaborate much because i have already talked about the need importance and significance of understanding the biological diversity now uh, one thing that i want to highlight is mm. that as i just said that it is very important to understand in groups now what are groups and what is classification students so uh, in simple terms if i say that classification is organizing uh, be it organisms be it things be it anything into groups now groups are formed on the basis of various criteria for example in primary classes ma'am we teach children that you know uh, color grouping uh, sorting of things mm -hmm. like uh, say will go together if if something is red 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 will go together blue blue will, will go together so this is a very simple thing but when we go to the level of uh, biodiversity there are also certain features characteristics i would say dimensions of not only in terms of structure but our function also which put certain group of people or organisms into one group and certain organisms into another group for example i may not be same as insect some insect is so insects are going to be put together in one group mm -hmm. and human beings are going to be put together in one group because there is a certain similarity not only in terms of my appearance but in terms of my brain capacity in terms of the organs and the cells in terms of the nature of cell that i am having so so these similarities and differences are there and on the basis of similarities and differences we put organisms into different groups and this process is known as classification and 
students i would say this classification is not something new it's not something you know last 40 or 50 years we've been doing no the attempts have been uh, there since a long period of time like you know uh, there was a greek thinker aristotle hmm. at that point of time it's been many years i mean he uh, tried to classify animals on the basis of you know uh, where they are living they are living on land or they are living water. on water or they are living on air so that way he was trying to classify though of course i mean at this point of time if you ask this is not going to be very useful because uh, on land so much diversity is there on air so much diversity is there and inside water also not mm. all the aquatic animals and plants are same so of right. course the life is very very diverse so uh, ma'am this is something uh, we need to understand that the attempts have been uh, right from starting number one and there are certain features basic foundations on which we group and separate organisms from each other and this process is known as classification so now now we have understood the process of classification students now the next question next logical question which will come in front of you is that how to classify which characteristic which features to be taken as the most basic one hmm. and which characteristic of feature to be taken as something which can be subsumed under that for example um, i will give a very lay person's example like you know um, one thing is that uh, all of us are human beings all of us are homo sapiens then this is one way of you know grouping all the human beings together the second question is that uh, on earth we have so many countries at present point of time do i belong to india do i belong to pakistan do i belong to afghanistan do i belong to you know usa china or some other country so i may be group with the people who are belonging to the same country for example all of us are indians very with lot of proud uh, i mean we feel very proud and with lot of pride we say we are indians hmm. so this is also one of the way of grouping together now with an indians we may say well i belong to north india so exactly. i belong to south india ha huh? right then i i may do grouping on the basis of girls okay chaliye ma'am bhi girl hai main bhi girl hu to hmm. girls girls kaise mazak mein kai baar ma'am bolte hai na ki chalo Haan. girls girls one side boys boys one side to ye bhi ek criteria ho sakta hai mm-hmm. for language ke basis pe hum keh sakte hain ki i am very comfortable in hindi so all the hindi speakers you know i very much connect with them kyunki main bhi hindi bolti hu aap bhi bolte hain hmm. to similarly aisa bhi ho sakta hai तो ऐसे बहुत सारे क्राइटेरिया हैं। सिमिलरली जब हम ऑर्गेनिजम्स की बात करेंगे स्टूडेंट्स वहां भी हमें देखना पड़ेगा कि ब्रॉडर क्राइटेरिया के अंदर और कौन से क्राइटेरिया हैं जिनमें जिनके बेसिस पे हम ऑर्गेनिजम्स को ग्रुप कर सकते हैं सो आई होप आप धीरे धीरे आप समझ रहे हैं कि कैसे क्लासिफिकेशन किया जाता है कैसे डिफरेंट ग्रुप्स बनते हैं और किस तरह से हम बायोडाइवर्सिटी को समझने की कोशिश करते हैं सो this was one thing which i wanted ma'am uh, students to understand this is the foundation of classification because many times i have seen ma'am over uh, these many years of my teaching experience the students end up just memorizing uh, what are the different groups and kingdoms and you know different groups but they really don't know what is the basis of classification so i yeah. thought we should give a substantial amount of time of, uh, for building up the foundations as well hmm. so uh, i hope now students know the foundation why it is being done and why it is important and how it is done now students after understanding this let's try to understand biodiversity in terms of the basic foundations and the characteristics used for classification now one important thing is that eukaryotic and prokaryotic okay these are the mm. cell types so uh, okay. i am sure many of them would have already heard if not i have just brought a chart i'll be using in my coming slides but we categorize cells cell is the basic foundation of organism our body is made up of cell and mm. all the living are having cells be it unicellular or be it multicellular so cell is the basic feature now if we understand the nature of cell it may be prokaryotic in nature or it may be eukaryotic in nature means prokaryotic is the preliminary type of cell it may not have well defined nucleus it may not have well defined cell organelles and it may be very very preliminary in terms of functions which are going on while you talk about eukaryotic cells they are advanced cells they have well defined nucleus they have you know well defined cell organelles and the division of labor is very efficient so this type of variation is there so first when we talk about classification we see whether an organism is having prokaryotic type of cell or eukaryotic type of cell. and on the basis of that we separate so this is the first criteria of classification mm-hmm. after that complexity of cell whether the organism is unicellular means 
it is just having one cell like full organism is having just one cell within that one cell all the functions are going on this is really so surprising because you know we human beings we have so many cells and mm. so many uh, tissue system and organs and i mean our body is highly complex and that's why we say that we are uh, higher uh, rung of the ladder in evolution and classification but this is so amazing to see ma'am single cell is there and all the life functions are happening like you know eating the food and ejecting the food and respiration and excretion everything is happening okay so this is also there apart from that we have seen whether the cell is eukaryotic prokaryotic we have seen whether the cell is unicellular or multicellular after that ma'am one important thing uh, is also for classification whether that organism is producing its own food means they are autotrophic in nature they can produce their own food like plants produce their own uh, food mm-hmm. with the help of chlorophyll mm-hmm. and leaves and sunlight and carbon dioxide and water from the soil and or they are dependent on others heterotrophic in nature for example we human beings we cannot produce food hmm. we are dependent on plants uh, we have plant source of food we have animal source of food hmm. so this is also one of the important features in defining uh, and grouping and classification whether you are autotrophic or whether you are heterotrophic okay that's quite and interesting apart- Yes, yes, ma'am. So, because you know, ma'am, uh, these things, and I think I, I would say this is a uh, very easy for us at this present point of time because we are able to say it so easily. But the scientists, we really need to celebrate our scientists who, over a period of time, have identified that these are the basic features, and we need to classify right. on these features. This is not so easy. I mean, how do I know? If you just imagine yourself, some thousand, two thousand. It's years a wide, back, it's a wide range, yes, actually. Yes, yes, ma'am. And out of that, hmm. we are finding out what are the basic uh, features on which we can uh, start the classification. Hmm. So this is very important. And when we, ma'am, go inside the plants and animals further, there are criteria of you know classifying uh, within the plants and within the animals also. Like insect is also animal. We are also animal. In biological terms, human beings are also animals. So, uh, but we are very different. So, what hmm. is the criteria of differentiation? Why am I not same as an insect? So. this criteria is also there so then when we go further we identify these criteria also now one important thing which we have been talking about but it will be really good to say it explicitly students that the range that we see the diversity that we are seeing and the classification we are doing mm-hmm. actually will show us how life has originated on earth dr priyanka oh, dr priyanka let me tell you we have only 2 minutes left right now Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. I'll be doing that. So, uh, this evolution is a long journey. Which organism came on Earth first, and which organism came on Earth after that? So, when we go on this journey of identifying the prokaryotic and eukaryotic animals, and you know their mode of nutrition, whether they are unicellular or multicellular, this actually inadvertently lead us to the concept of evolution because all the organisms which have come on Earth, uh, they tend to have similar features. and all the organisms which came on earth which evolved i would say on earth uh, in the later part of time uh, which are very recent in their origin they have similar kind of features so the grouping actually when you start classifying and doing grouping you would see that classification is very much integrated to the concept of evolution because all the organisms which are older i would not say less uh, advanced or more advanced because this is not the uh, criteria in evolution i would say older and the recent one newer organisms they tend to go together so this is one aspect of understanding sure ma'am ma'am uh, i would uh, just give students this idea so I'm that maybe uh, in, in next part ma'am. we Keep will continue so brief, right? yes ma'am so uh, we will continue this in the next class so students uh, this important part i would like to end my conversation here after understanding the basis and criteria of classification we really need to understand now what is the present accepted form of class okay so uh, this has also been journey uh, there was one scientist on schekel in 1894 robert whitaker in 1969 uh, and uh, also uh, i would say uh, there are uh, different uh, scientists who have given classification at different point of time but most accepted one is the rh whitaker's classification that is five kingdom classification hmm. so we divide organisms into five groups monera protista fungi plantae and So, students, I end my conversation here, and I would request you till the next session when I join you again and we discuss on more topics. Please uh, read and study about these five. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Priyanka Varshney, for your detailed information on diversity in living organism. It was really very interesting to know all about the <coughs> organism. Thank you so much, ma'am. And your learners, as Dr. Priyanka said, you can send all your feedback and your query uh, on our email address that is dts.class9 at redcit.nic.in. It's time for me to wrap up this session. Renu Bhatt is signing off. Namaskar. <laughs>